Well, nice to have you with us on this afternoon radio program here on Mad Dog Unleashed. Yours truly, Christopher Russo, kicking off a day. Talk to you about what's going on as far as the world of sports is concerned. Eddie Erickson, Colin Schmelling, yours truly, on a great serious sex M82, 888 Mad Dog 6. That's your two way sports talk telephone number as we talk to you about what's going on as far as the world of sports is concerned. We'll do some things here in the course of the day. Ira later, uh, Dick Vermeil later on Gruden. We'll have some, uh, he, I guess, had lots of correspondence with Gruden in our continuing quests to deliver the huge spots. Uh, Eddie Erickson is uh, uh, trying to track down John. He's been all over the place, but uh, has not returned Ed's calls. And then, of course, Nick Saban, who we are still trying to locate through that uh, TV anchor in Memphis, uh, who Eddie somehow... uh, Eddie got... You know, it's amazing. Eddie got the TV anchor in Memphis based on one name, and he found out who called yesterday. You know, Chris here, come on. He loves you, blah, blah, blah. So Eddie found him out, but Eddie couldn't get the Alabama telephone number out, 205 area code. He doesn't know where Alabama's located. He thought it was in Birmingham. I said, Eddie, it's in Tuscaloosa. So, I mean, uh, and then, uh, so we can't get a hold of Alabama, but Eddie somehow tracked down the TV anchor Russell in Memphis. So nice job by Ed as we try to get our job done here with uh, with Saban. And that's where we begin today, coaching and coaches as far as sports is concerned and where we want to, and where we want to rank them. Now, I know it's a Wednesday on the 10th day of January and you can sit there and say, really, Chris, list radio? Well, you know what? Today might be the decent day to do the list because of the idea uh, that Saban, uh, where do you want to put him now in the, es- in the um, echelon of great coaches in sports? Now, I, again, you, you could sit there and say he's not that concerned with it and he might be moving on to the next championship as we speak, because the quote today from him was, you know, I'll enjoy this for 24 to 48 hours. And so he'll go on to the next thing. And that's what makes these guys great. I mean, they live and die by winning. I mean, Riley is a guy that uh, thought of the next championship with the Lakers. To, you know, he thought about the next championship with the Lakers during the parade. You know, the famous one, we're going to go back to back. That was the 87-88 group uh, that ended up beating Detroit. And they stuffed a sock in his mouth when he was going to say something for the third go around. Lombardi was all revved up and trying to get back to back to back because he wanted to be the first coach to lead a team to three championships in a row in 65, 66, 67. Uh, you know, Bowman won a million championships. He wanted to go back to back. Krzyzewski, I mean, there's a million examples of, uh, you know, these coaches who, you know, put a championship to bed pretty darn quickly. Uh, you know, after the parade, uh, a little visit from the White House, and that's it. Let's go. Uh, and that's what makes them great. That's what makes these coaches, you know, one of a kind, and that's why they live and breathe the sport that they coach in. So, uh, and Saban is one of those. Now, John Gruden is not. Uh, and now, uh, and I love Gruden. He's a good. I think he's very good on TV. A lot of people don't think he is, but I've always gotten a kick out of him on TV. He's got personality. Um, you know, uh, he's never afraid to pick on the officials. He, you know, he. I just like him on the television. I, always, I, I. He's done a good job on that Monday night. I thought he was a little tepid there this past week in the Tennessee Kansas City game. Uh, I said that to you there a couple days ago on Monday. I thought he was a little tepid. I thought that uh, he was a little guarded. I think he was a little bit of an in-be- he was in an in-between situation. No longer was he a broadcaster. He was a coach again. And I think that kind of threw him off a bit. And I and I thought that uh, th- that broadcast was a little choppy and a little guarded throughout. And I think that cost him. But overall, uh, I think he's been a very good broadcaster. I think he's a little overrated as a coach. Now, he's got a chance to prove me wrong. Uh, and, you know, you forget because you remember Moley mainly with winning a Super Bowl with Tampa, but you do forget that, you know, he was the other coach in the tuck game in the snow in Foxborough when uh, Vinatieri made one of the great kicks of all time, 47 yard in a snowstorm to force overtime. Uh, that is one of the great kicks you're ever going to see. Pat Summerall made one of those in 58 against the Browns uh, to help the Giants along uh, on their quest to be playing Baltimore in the NFC title game, NFL title game. And same thing for Vinatieri. Next week, of course, they played Pittsburgh, and then the week after that, or the two weeks after that, they won the whole thing against the Rams. But Gruden coached those two teams uh, with the uh, with the Raiders. The first two years, they're eight and eight. The next year, they lost to the Ravens. If you remember correctly, uh, Tony Siragusa fell on Rich Gannon, uh, the big fat Lou Siragusa. I mean, he was a heavy guy with a load, and he fell on Gannon, and that hurt Gannon in that championship game. Now, I don't think the Raiders were going to beat the Ravens that year. 
I think it was the championship game. It may have been a I can look that score up. It was it may have been only second round, whatever it was. And then the next year, Gruden ended up losing to New England. Then he goes, and then Al Davis gets you know they have a big falling out, and he ends up uh, well they don't love each other. He goes to Tampa. It's a huge trade. They trade picks, money, the whole bit. Ends up in Tampa. Uh, Dungy ends up in Indianapolis. Dungy wins his championship with the Colts and never really looks back and never barks on the idea or screams at the idea that uh, Gruden won a title in Tampa with his players. He kept his mouth shut. And then, of course, um, and that's why Dungy's a classy guy. And we should get Dungy on. You know, we got his number. Why don't, why don't I text him for tomorrow? I'll, I'll see if I can do that. Um, or I'll have maybe, no, I'll do that. I'll let Eddie work on Dick Vermeule. Um, and uh, through Brian Monzo. Um, I, I will make sure Monzo over there, of course, on local, uh, the producer. Uh, uh, and then, of course, Gruden ends up winning a title with Tampa. And then he goes 45 and 51 over his next, whatever it might be. So, I mean, it's not like he did it year after year after year. Two pretty good years with the Raiders, two so so years, two pretty good years with the Raiders. A couple of good years with Tampa, including a championship, so we give him credit for that. But then he fell off the face of the earth. Uh, so, I mean, he got $100 million. I mean, that's an awful lot of money to give a guy. You know, he's not Lombardi, and this is not John Wooden. I mean, he got $100 million for 10 years. Now, he seems like he's all in. The press conference had some enthusiasm to it. All his ex-players showed up, Charles Woodson and everything else. Poor Jack Del Rio, who two years ago was on the cusp. Can you imagine the Raiders and Del Rio's history if he didn't break his leg car Christmas Eve against the Colts, which threw them off, which obviously hurt them in the postseason. They lost to Houston. Carr maybe really never quite the same this year. Can you imagine that broken leg? And that's amazing how it works in sports. Here comes Gruden and everybody now revved up on the Raiders uh, for 2000. First off, there's no you know honeymoon period for Gruden. I mean, you know, he's there forever and he's there in Vegas. Now, Gruden doesn't realize that. You know, the Raider job is not Oakland. The Raider job is Las Vegas. Since city. So, I mean, a new environment and I know the Raider fan loves to travel and everything else. And they will go to uh, they will travel to a degree but they're not going to travel 70,000 in force. That has to be a local element to the Raiders once they get to Nevada. We'll see if they show up there. But Gruden's got to remember, you know, he's only got two years with Oakland then they're leaving. So, uh, it's really the Las Vegas. He didn't join Oakland. He joined the Las Vegas Raiders. There's a big difference. So, keep that in mind. But what are the accomplishments? What is the goals for Gruden? Well, they better be high. I mean, Gruden I'm not going to sit there, you know, while I'm rebuilding. I got to get the, my feet wet again. No, 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 no. Uh, this team two years ago was primed to make a huge postseason run before an injury. And last year they had a bad year, but they should recover. They got a good pick. They got obviously a quarterback who you can work with. They got Mack, who's a, a wrecker on defense. I mean, this team, they got some young wide receivers. This team next year in a division that's so so, Chiefs stink, Chargers, I mean, Denver, no quarterback. This team next year. Year, they better be a big time team. This is not a scenario where they're rebuilding. No, no, no. You want to tell me the Bears growing pains? I buy it. You want to tell me, you know, Arizona no quarterback? Yeah, Cleveland. Yes. Oh, well, that's not a, a job, new job deal. But not the case with a few. Of the uh, Giants got to win right away. Uh, Oakland's got to win right away. Uh, there are, you know, there are a lot of these jobs here right out of Indianapolis. If luck plays, has to win right away. And Oakland is in that category. And he is not up there, Gruden, in the echelon of the great coaches in sport. And if you want to look at them in the history of, uh, you know, look at each sport and give me the top three or four guys and then put them in a big mix and see where you stand, you can easily do that. And in college football right now, Saban is on that list. Now, he's up there, he's there with Bear Bryant, and then, you know, it depends on what your favorite university is after that. You want to say Rockney? You probably got to put him in there with Bear I don't know if there's anybody else. I know people are going to bring up Woody Hayes and Shem Blacker. You know, Shem Blacker never won a championship at Michigan. Everybody loves him. He won one Rose Bowl. I mean, you know, I know Bo this and Bo that, and he put more teeth into that Ohio State rivalry, and they were really down before he took the job. But when you look at Bo, historically, you know, he, he won one Rose I think he won one Rose Bowl. That's it. One. I think he was one and eight, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, it's not like, you know, I and mean, they didn't win five championships. So uh, I don't know, and I'm not putting Meyer there yet, although he's won, obviously, championships in two different places. Uh, I, I know you could obviously think about him, but let's just for argument purposes, right now in college football, the three all-time greats, let's put Brian who won six, 
Now, Saban has won six, five in Tuscaloosa. And let's put Rockney in there just because he's Newt Rockney. Is there anybody else I'm missing? You know, you want to go. Uh, I'm not putting Alonzo Stagg in there. You know, let's not go too crazy. 100 years ago, Pop Warner. I mean, Stanford. Let's not go that nuts when they're coming. You know, Frank Leahy, there's other, there's other court, uh, coaches at Notre Dame. You know, obviously, Ara, who is a great coach. But let's not. Ara was a phenomenal coach. Uh, but let's not go quite that far. Let's just go those three. The college basketball, I mean, you know, Wooden and Krzyzewski and Dean Smith. Now, Dean didn't win enough titles. He only won a couple of championships. Um, he's a little bit like Tom Landry. You know, he was there forever, and he should have won more than he did. But let's put those three of the three guys. I know you got Knight, too. Uh, you could discuss him if you wish. Um uh, I'm trying to think if there's anybody else, you know, in the era of the great coaches in college basketball. Let's go those three, all right? Wooden, Shashevsky, and Dean. Dean was there for 100 years. Uh, they were consistently great on a year-in, year-out basis. Uh, you know, I, I know there's Frank McGuire. Uh, I, you know, I know there's McCracken at Indiana, the Hurry and Hoosiers. I mean, we all know Claire B. I mean, there's a million coaches. Let's just do those three. Let's be fair. Let's, let's look at it from a threesome scenario. Those three there. All right, let's look at the NBA. How about if we give you... Well, I don't know how you get around our back, Phil Jackson and Riley. Um, now, you could argue Riley if you wanted and not put him in the top three in the in that category all time in the NBA. Uh, you know, Phil Jackson and Auerbach. Now, I know Phil had, a, uh, you know, had Jordan and then Kobe. I could have won half those titles, but he's, he, you know, he won 11 for a reason. Auerbach, I think, has got 10. Uh, Raleigh's got, uh, you know, he didn't win the first one with the Lakers. Magic's got, f- uh, no, Raleigh's got one with the Heat, too. So Raleigh does have five. He's got four with the Lakers and one with the Heat. Because he won in 96 when they beat Dallas, or 2006 when they beat Dallas with Miami. You know, that was a lucky championship. Shouldn't have won that series. And obviously, Stan Van Gundy coached half the team, but half the year. Uh, I'll go those three. Now, there's a lot of different ways you can go with this. You know, a lot of people would come up with other NBA guys. Um, you know, I'll pick these. Th- I mean, you got Popovich. You can consider him too, you know. You want to put Popovich over Raleigh? I would not do that because Raleigh won in three different places. So I would not do that myself. Pop's only won in San Antonio. And, he, you know, they, they tanked to get Duncan and Robinson. Keep that in mind. And they lost on purpose. They never proved it, but they did. To end up with that, you know, they had David Robinson. He had a bad back. Dave, sit out. Let's get the draft pick. And here comes Duncan. Um, so you can make an argument there. But so you could go Pop. I won't. I'll go Jackson, Riley, and Auerbach in the, in, in the NBA. Got the college. You got the college football. Uh, the NFL is Lombardi. It's Belichick. And that third guy in the NFL is tricky. Uh, I guess it's, you, know, you go Walsh. Um, there's a lot of them. In the, I'm not going to go Hallis. He's an owner. He was there forever. I'm not going to go in the, You go Paul Brown. You want to do Paul Brown? And the innovator that he won, that he was, and all the championships he won with the Browns. Uh, you want to do? You want to do Shula? You want to do Landry? Lombardi and Belichick are there, so that third one is up to you. Uh, you know, basically, uh, uh, beauty in the eye of the beholder. Uh, take your pick. You can go Walsh. You can go Gibbs. I don't know if you go Gibbs. Uh, all right, I'll, I'll throw it in. You go Walsh. You can go Gibbs. You can go Paul Brown. Um, the, you know, those. You know, you. Uh, Hmm. Those three specifically. Uh, and then you you go Shula and Landry too. Now, Shula didn't win a lot of... You know, Shula, for all the greatness of Shula, he only won twice, you know. You know, he only won twice. Lost 64. Uh, lost the Jet game in 69. You know, Shula only won the two championships. People think Shula won 30 championships. And Landry only won two championships. You know, Lombardi won five. Belichick won five. You know, Walsh won three. And two is Seaford. I know, but let's you you pick your third, and then the hardest one is the hockey. To find the three in the NHL, I'm you know Bowman is there. Uh, you know, you, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. Sather, Al Arbor, Toe Blake. Uh, you have to pick somebody. I'd have to look at who the coaches were in the '50s with the Canadians winning all those championships. 
uh, because, you know, they won about five in a row, 56 to 60, whatever it was, with Maurice Richard. You know, the... Um, I'd have to go back. I, I'd have to look at Punch Imlac. I, I don't know the NHL coaches as well as I should. Um, you know, and Pittsburgh's had a lot of different coaches to have won the Cup, so I wouldn't put them in that category. Say they're one with Edmonton. So, and, you know, Al Arbor won all those championships with the Islanders. Uh, you know, Bowman with Montreal is a no-brainer. And then, of course, with Detroit. Bowman's there. Uh, and then you could decide who the other two are. And that's, that's the weakest one for me. Amada is up on the NHL. Uh, great coaches historically, as I probably should be. Uh, you know Bowman, he's got nine titles. And then you can figure out the other two. You can pick somebody from the 50s Canadians. Uh, I don't know if that was, uh, you know, Dick Irvin's father coached that team. And then you had Imlock, and then you also had Toe Blake. I don't know where they all were. Who was it? Go ahead. I mean, I'm just going to give you the top. 10 wins. I want to hear the cups, but go ahead. Let me hear the wins. Bowman, Joel Quenville, second. Ken Hitchcock's third. I can't. No, no, not those two. Go ahead. Al Arbor, Barry Trotz, Lindy Ruff, Dick Irvin, Pat Quinn, Mike Keenan, Ron Wilson. Well, not Keenan, not Wilson. Dick Irvin, coach, where to where? Let me hear. Dick Irvin was 1929 to 1956. That's a lot of Stanley. Stanley, Let's see Stanley Cups. Stanley Cups, it's Bowman, Toe Blake, Hap Day, Al Arbor, Dick Irvin, Glenn Sather. How many does Irvin have? Uh, four. How many does Toe Blake have? Eight. Well, then he's got to be there. Well, Toe Blake had those cups with the Canadians and the Leafs? 56 to 68. He won two with the Leafs and then the rest with the Canadians, or were they all Canadians? Let's see here. Hold on. Because the Leafs won two of those championships in the 60s. Uh, Did he coach that team? No, it was all. He only coached the Canadians. Oh, he only coached the Canadians. Yeah. I thought he coached the Leafs. All right. So, yeah, Toe Blake. Uh, he has to be considered. Um, and then, of course, the uh, and then one sport I haven't done yet. So Blake, Bowman, and then you can take your pick on the third. Arbor, Sather, Dick Irvin, one of those three, right? You agree? Okay, he does. I do. There you go. Now, the baseball, who are you putting there as the three greatest managers of all time? Uh, let's not go back to John McGraw. Let's do us all a favor. That's too long ago, even for me. And I love that stuff. Let, let's, take a, let's take a pass on him. You want to go Casey Stengel for winning... Uh, you know, 49 through 54, he won, five, he won 49, 50, then 51, 2, and 3. He won five championships in a row. You want to you want to think of him? Uh, you got, you know, you got Torrey, you got La Russa, you have um, Sparky Anderson, won two and one each, won each, one, one in each league. You know, obviously Stengel has to be considered because of a, you, you want to go Water Alston, you want to go DeRocher, didn't win enough, so forget DeRocher. Uh, where do you want to go for the three managers? You want to go, uh, you know, Joe McCarthy? I mean, Stengel has to be there for whatever the reason. You, you have to put Stengel there. The other two are tricky in baseball because there's a, there's a lot of managers on a lot of these great teams. I think you probably have to put Torrey there. I mean, he won four titles with the Yankees. Uh, they, you know, dynasty 14 years. You want to put Bobby Cox there? Lost a lot in the World Series. The three. It's tricky to find the three in each league. And then you group them up. And discuss it. But here's the one thing I would say to tie it all up in a little a little ribbon. None of them made $100 million, and none of them's named John Gruden. 21 after the hour, we continue. Mad Dog Unleashed. <laughs> 